Welcome to the Dwarven Forge Build of the Month for February of 2021, and this is Shivering Springs. It's an ice cave hidden high in the mountains, which contains a mysterious magical pool. This build is made out of four sets, which are all available as a bundle on our web store with a bonus gift card, but only for the month of February. So. The story is, the local temple has reached out to the players for help. One of their priests in a far distant parish, in a small village high up at the top of the Aranthor Mountains, has gone missing. And this priest is instrumental in the village's big spring thawing festival. The priest must make the spring libations, some mysterious drink that he has the recipe for, and hands down from one priest to the next. He has to make the spring libations to fuel the festival, or everything will go awry. Please, please, please. Please, can the players help? Can they find him? So of course they're gonna say yes, and they're gonna set out into the icy wilderness in search of the ice cave. Let's see what awaits them in Shivering Springs. <laughs> Yeti or not, let's dive in. So we have two leftover pieces for this build, one trifecta ledge and one uh, texture patch, which we didn't end up using. The player's gonna make their way through terrible uh, frosty mountain tops, right? There's probably a blizzard, maybe they have to make a survival check and nature check, maybe there's constitution saves because it's terrible weather, but you know, make it a long, harrowing, isolated, cold, scary trek until finally following the directions, uh, they find this ice cave. So, we have built a little, you can use this piece if you want as a little entry area, uh, but not necessary, but it's kind of nice to give them a place to stage their minis. So coming through the, uh, the little archway here, they find an actually very large ice cave. Uh, and if they're clever, if they're doing a, do a little investigation, maybe you could give it to them with perception if you want, or even a uh, survival. They can see there's large footprints that are kind of skirting this central area. Because if they if they step on here, the ice is really thin, and it cracks open, revealing a um, icy water below, uh, which is kind of a, a fun gag to reveal on the table. So if they if they spot it, then they can skirt around it and leave it there. If they stumble into it, you can break it off and have it nice be a pit there. So, venturing deeper into this cool ice cave, there's this whole section of like rocky-ish terrain. Uh, looks like there's been like maybe probably a lot of upheaval in the ground around here, so the whole thing is a little uneven. And if later there's combat here, this becomes a really interesting area to do some fighting. Mm -hmm. A little crevasse. And then over here, stepping up the sledge here, the players can see this icy pool here. It's a frozen solid pool. And what's particularly disconcerting, if they get a little closer, see, look, there are bodies frozen under the ice, like screaming bodies under there. Also, maybe some livestock, just a lot of, but mostly like just creepy frozen human uh, bodies. They can kind of see like, you know, frozen anguished faces under there, which should be really uh, disconcerting. Uh, and then, Let's say like over here on the far side, of course, maybe even over here, make it as far away from them as possible. There's uh, the frozen body that it matches the description of the priest that they're looking for. Um, they can just sort of see half, mostly submerged in the water, frozen uh, body kind of slumped up on the side here. But of course, it's across this expanse of creepy frozen ice. So they might spend some time deliberating. Do they want to get touch the ice? Do they want to go in? Are they just going to go across? What's going to happen? Is it sturdy? I don't know. Um, if you want to give them like an arcana check, they can sense that there's there's a lot of magical energy uh, coalescing through here. Maybe there's, uh, there's definitely, maybe there's a ley line flowing through here or something, but there's definitely magical energy. They can kind of feel it tingling in the cave. Um, maybe after some trepidation, they'll poke and they'll prod. Maybe they'll try and do some crazy parkour up the up the walls or uh, you know some shenanigans with ropes and throwing the dwarf or something. Who knows what will ensue, but hopefully at some point they will kind of make their way out over the ice. At first, maybe it, uh, a little, a little uh, anticlimactic. Nothing happens. They're out on the ice. It's okay. It's not so bad. Other than being like creepy bodies under there, 
It's like, okay, we're just on ice. And it's slippery. Maybe they have to make like an acrobatics. Maybe it's, you know what? It's extra slippery, right? It's like a tricky acrobatics uh, to stay up there. It's like super slick. Like maybe not quite grease spell slip, or maybe it is. Maybe it's like grease spell. They've got to, let's just do that. It's like a grease spell, oil slipperiness, bam. It's like super slick, uh, which can make for all sorts of fun shenanigans sliding across and around. Anyway, at some point, they're going to probably go over and check out the body. When it feels dramatically appropriate, you can tell them, anybody that's like a that's a caster has a little sensitivity to magic you feel like kind of a pulse of magic energy and the ice begins to glow a little bit and then using your controller for the light panel you can just start dialing up a little bit of light so give the give the players a moment to react or something you get kind of like panic whatever and then hopefully they'll get off the ice but if, you know if they don't moments later magic energy sort of flows in this pool and the ice almost instantly melts leaving behind this glowing pool of radiance here uh, so let's say that they uh, they kind of leapt to safety uh, as soon as they felt like something weird was going on the ice uh, maybe they're not trapped on this side or maybe even more fun like let's just split them up right let's let's split the party across this thing because now maybe they're worried that now there's glowing water so now all these frozen bodies are kind of just floating there in this pool. So it's beautiful, glowing, kind of magical pool full of corpses, which is just a, a terrible mixture there. If anybody is so bold as to drink the water, a few things will happen. One, they get a great feeling of euphoria and chill. They're just like really sort of happy and relaxed, feels great. Two, they're gonna have the effects of a, like a heroism potion, right? So they're blessed and they've got temporary hit points, they're feeling really great. And three, they actually start glowing. So they'll also be under the effects of fairy fire. Uh, so for good or for ill, probably mostly for ill. So no, no visibility and advantage on attacks against them. Uh, but they feel great and they love it. And it tastes delicious, despite the fact that there's, you know, 20 bodies floating there. Delicious, cool mountain spring. Uh, you could bottle the stuff and sell it. Oof. So the one one good thing uh, with the ice freezing is the body of the priest uh, is now free. So if they want, they can kind of drag him up out of the uh, out of the pool, or they could just search him there, or whatever they want to do. But uh, he is very dead, like super super dead, like full on dead, dead, dead and frozen and just waterlogged and gross just ugh. if they search him if you want to if they're a little squeamish and you want to make it easier for them you could be like clutching in his hands he's got his this book um or you could if you want to make it really tough on them you could be like in a pouch uh wrapped in like vellum or something so it's somehow it's it's managed to survive and not get totally waterlogged so he's got a book and in the book it tells his secret recipe for the spring libations right and he says don't take the water from the pool however potent and magical it is it's not quite the right effect they're looking for. You need to take seven drops from the uh, magical wellsprings beyond the pool and put those in each bottle. And the rest are relatively mundane components. And it warns, it says, these libations will have uh, properties of an aphrodisiac uh, as well as an intoxicant. So uh, use sparingly and only in the spring festival. So in lieu of a living priest, of course, they could also bring the corpse back. They, um, The players can create the, uh, the spring libations. They can come over to this back area and then harvest uh, some water out of these uh, pools. And I think it's gonna be, it's like, a, it's like a delicate process. It takes like, maybe it takes 10 minutes. Um, it's a very precise, they have to like measure and drop and time it. And this is sort of weird, archaic. Uh, maybe it's superstition, maybe it's not, but those are the directions. So it's like a long, complicated, um, esoteric process of, of harvesting this stuff. Because these things are these little cool magical pools. This is my son Grayson builds. He always makes these things like some special pools because they look kind of like they're buttons from a video game or something. So he makes them like have all these weird things. So I stole that idea from him. So at some point, the, the magic will sort of pulse. They'll get a little tingling. Since a little, a, uh, the casters will get a little inkling that's going to happen before it happens. Then the magic uh, fades out of the pool and it instantly freezes back up. So if there is a a player unfortunate enough to be like bathing in the corpse filled water uh it would like freeze them up to their waist and they'd be stuck and they'd probably take some damage and i don't know it'd be pretty your legs would be a popsicle no wouldn't be so pleasant so hopefully that doesn't happen to it in addition probably like right in the middle of this harvesting or maybe right before the end right like a minute before the end of the harvesting there's a disturbance at the front of the uh, cavern and it's tough there's no good we can actually look yeah 
you know, I do this at home. I, you check your line of sight, right? So there's no good line of sight to the uh, to the entrance because these uh, these walls and whatnot. Um, so they can't quite see what's going, but there's movement at the entrance. As it turns out, there are two yetis who have made this cave their home. They are uh, they've been drinking from this water uh, and just giving them this wonderful euphoria. They haven't been howling, right? Yetis are normally howling in the dark as they hunt and they get all crazy and wild. It's made them like really chill and happy and they're kind of like nesting up for spring. Because spring is bad for the yetis, right? All the all the snow sort of starts melting and their hunting grounds are diminished because they don't have stealth when they're out in the grass, whatever. So they want to stay in the thing. So they're kind of stocking up for spring. So this is, they figured this is where they're going to hang out for spring and they're stocking up as many bodies as they can in here. And this is going to be their food for the spring as they hang out and they enjoy each other's company because they've been drinking this water, feeling good, just stocking up all the corpses they need. And of course, they're going to be very dismayed when they get back to their wonderful little love nest and discover a bunch of jerky adventurers uh, in here pilfering their bodies and their water. They probably actually don't care about this water, but they don't want anybody in their little love nest. So... If the players have some good perception, or maybe they set an alarm, or it's had a watch or something, they can maybe get the jump on the Yetis or be prepared. Um, but one way or another, they're going to be in a tough spot. It's going to probably lead to combat in a really interesting spot where you can have, if you want, the you can have the pool fade up or down kind of at your whim, but give give them players like a you know a one round where they can sort of feel the thing, and maybe you could if it's off or you kind of give it a little flicker kind of effect, right? So that they know it's it's about to change. When they could take that, use that to their advantage or their disadvantage. So they could stay over here and use ranged attacks if it's water, or they could slide across, or they can try and lure the Yetis out, or maybe they want to. Uh, have a fight over here in the uh, in the rough terrain. There's this like interesting bottleneck zone here where they could kind of trap the yetis on rough terrain and maybe uh, outnumber them and sort of hold them back, keep their casters at bay. Some sort of a couple of interesting areas to wage combat here. Do you wage combat? Well, apparently we're waging combat. Uh, they could even do something where they kind of try to push the yetis into the uh, ice patch or something if they wanted to, or the water patch. Um, they use the pool, but plenty of room to try and figure out how to get out. They could also maybe try and sneak out if they're like really clever. Maybe they hide out here, finish up the uh, the ritual, and then um, see what happens. Maybe the yetis come back and they've got just like a big yak carcass or something. And you just like they throw it on the uh, on the ice, and then, so then when the pool uh, when the pool melts, oof, the carcass will drop in, and then when it freezes up again. It's sort of this is their cool this is a freezer system right they just have all sorts of bodies here just ready to uh, snack at uh, any given moment corpsicles as it were uh, so maybe they could they could wait the the yetis would throw the yak down maybe like settle down for a nice afternoon nap and they could kind of sneak out free of bloodshed something you like or if you want to face your players with um, with some moral ambiguity, assuming that you've got some, some safety tools in place, you could say that the two yetis are a mated pair and the female is pregnant. And they are, uh, that's what they're stocking up for spring. This is their love nest preparing for young yeti. And so then they have this interesting quandary where they've broken into this house or this you know, cave where these yetis live and there's a pregnant yeti here. Do they really want to go slaughter those yetis uh, on their way out? Uh, and it makes for a, a much more uh, gray area, difficult decision making process for your players could make things more lively. And it might even encourage them to try and negotiate, try and talk with the Yetis, particularly if, let's say, the um, Let's say the pool's up and nobody wants to go in the pool. With the they could like, you know, they could try and negotiate with the Yeti. So assuming nobody speaks Yeti, I don't know any player that's ever actually taken the Yeti language, but they could maybe through gestures or you might give them if they've got comprehend languages or a, because apparently Yetis speak Yeti. According to the Master Manual, Yetis speak Yeti. So maybe, they, you know, they understand. They've got innate intelligence. They could try and negotiate with the Yetis across this big pool or something and sort of say, hey, listen, we're just going to take off and... Uh, leave you guys in peace or whatnot. So it gives you a couple of different ways to kind of skin this cat or skin this Yeti, as it were, or not skin the Yeti, as the case may be, and get on out there. And then they can, uh, they can head back. They can bring the corpse. Well, if the Yetis are there, they're probably not going to let them bring the corpse, but they can at least bring the spring libations 
uh, back with them and the recipe back so they can pass it on to the next uh, priest so they can continue the ritual uh, and be hailed as heroes. And maybe they come back wearing Yeti fur capes. If that was their way they went, we will see. Because we're building on a light panel here for our cool glowing pool gag, uh, we have to level out a bunch of the other things to get to this level. The light panel comes with seven of these little two by one risers. Uh, so I used a couple of those right here, just the base level, you can just throw this in. If you wanted, you could level this whole room out. You could use a piece of plywood, you could use some other floors, you could use more of our risers, but because they weren't in the kits, I didn't do it, and it looks fine having the step down. It kind of makes things more dynamic. Over in the front here, I did the same, same thing, right? These are just built right on top of the risers. But then over here, things get more exciting. So I, I wanted to kind of, I wanted to do the elevation change uh, using these ledge pieces. And because this diagonal ledge doesn't fully cover, I didn't want to have that one little bit of exposed uh, ice there. I didn't want to have that be a riser. So I put a floor under there. The floors are the same height as the risers, so you can interchange them. And then over here in this section, I used another ledge with the swell ledge underneath, so the little exposed area. Uh, once again, you can see the you see the white snowy bits. So it just felt like really complete and just a really nice little crevasse there. I used the rising stalagmite uh, to transition from this height wall down to this height wall, and it really gives us a nice, uh, right, nice easy, gentle rise. These little details that I feel like really, I don't know, ties those tie these builds nicely together. Simple way to just do a little elevation rise, uh, and it looked kind of cooler having this like little crevasse effect uh, kind of makes the, the room more dynamic and interesting. And on this side here, it's just, I'm using, once again, two, um, the swell ledge and a ledge wedge uh, up against the backs of these stepped floors. Make this whole thing feel like a cool little crevasse, and we'll put a, a slide one in there and dress it all out. So the other thing you can do is I wanted to mask the, uh, since we're not doing, we're not covering this complete light panel, I wanted to mask the bits of the light panel that were outside the walls. So I'm using a variety of these freestanding walls along the outside here. And what I did, very simply, so I took a piece, this place was a piece of black wrap, but you could use black paper, black cardboard. And I just, I traced the, uh, I traced the pieces, I placed it on there, I traced the pieces, uh, and then I cut out slightly inside the tracing line, and I got a nice little mask that would mask out any of the light leak around the edges and makes the whole thing feel a little more cohesive. And it took all of like three minutes to make this, and it, I feel like it improved the look of the build a lot on the table. I think it would help wow your players a little bit. If they don't quite see how the sausage is made, it's a little more mysterious. Uh, and then you just, cover it right back up with all your pieces and off you go. Oh, and right here, I used a little a ledge wedge to transition from the walls to the other ledge. Because we're using, these are all freestanding walls, I have a lot of wiggle room to kind of make a nice irregular shape, right? Because we don't have, we're not stuck on the grid. You can kind of move these, wobble them around a lot and kind of have a really nice organic uh, shape to the perimeter of this thing. When in doubt, you can always use these uh, corner fill stalagmites to fix any uh, any of your irregular areas, right? So I put one here to kind of mask that joint. I put one here to mask this corner and kind of help make our irregular terrain. If you had more, you could put them. You know, I could put one over here. You could go all the way across the thing. You could put one over here to kind of fill that out. Or if you want, you could slide this over and put one there. That looks that looks cool. That's even better. I'm gonna do something like that. Yeah, these little corner fill stalagmites are just super useful for smoothing out any of your hard corners in an organic build. And that's all the build tips for today. 
And that was Shivering Springs. And this build is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much you can do with these ice pieces. They're so cool. All four of these sets are available as a bundle on our web store with a bonus gift card, but only for the month of February. We also have a build guide available as a free download on our website so you can see exactly how to build this. And if you wanna help us with the next Build of the Month, please tune in to Building of the Build of the Month on our Twitch channel, where we take your ideas and help synthesize them into the final build. This month, we have a big thank you to imi202 for the idea to use the Phantasmal Filter and Light Panel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on this or any of our other quality content from Dwarven Forge. And with that, have a nice day. And it's back to the anvil. Oh!